Well, let me start out by just saying this, that you really could never know how important that I really know you all. And you hear this stuff all the time from all kinds of politicians, but the one thing that you're going to get from me without question in all the world is I'm not a politician. I didn't come here being a politician. I'm not going to say anything bad about politicians, but I hope to be able to leave here someday and not be a politician. Now, from that standpoint, I mean what I say, and I won't tell you anything that's not the truth. You know, I see a guy sitting in the back, Gordon Lamb. And I think just about this, and this, this is a great story to tell you. I had no idea that I was going to mention this today in any way, shape, form, or fashion, but just think about this. Think about what you do. You are local. You are government at a local level with control to a degree that makes things happen, makes good things happen in your areas, and we need that desperately. Because when we start trying to manage everything from Charleston, boy, it gets really screwed up. Now, think about Gordon Lamb. He came to me forever ago. He had an idea. Him and the commissioners of McDowell County they had an idea. They went out and they procured some land, if I remember correctly, Gordon, for Massey. Then they had some timber on that land and they were going to try to work a deal out where they could get generates a little bit of money from the timber. But the whole idea was they wanted to someday somehow build a prison there. Now, I was somewhat important because maybe I was in the area, I was, my company was in the area of mining, and Gordon knew how committed I was to the county and everything. And so he wanted me, he wanted me to some way, somehow, level off the spot and do enough mining and coal extraction to be able to make it work. So they worked at it. And I thought they were crazy. I thought they were absolutely crazy. I said, just in there, there's no way in the world. And he worked with Governor Underwood, and they worked, and they worked, and they worked, and they worked. Then it came to bid time, okay? And we bid two million some odd dollars. The next closest bid, if I remember correctly, was $20 million. And the reason we bid two some two million some odd dollars because I knew, I knew that they didn't have the money to do the job. They didn't have the money to make it work. Well, we leveled off the thing. We probably lost some money. We absolutely didn't make a dime, I'll promise you that. We probably lost pretty significant money, but what a wonderful project it ended up being. And lo and behold, they made it happen. They made it happen on, on the local level with a guy that believed in trying to do stuff for his own county. And absolutely, their faith that they worked with Governor Underwood and on and on, and they made a project happen that was in, totally impossible. You do the same things all the time. All the time. You know, we just denied, and it's not all the money in the world, but we just denied the exception to AEP and, and, you know, over something that didn't make a bit of sense in the world to me, you know, but, but all I would tell you is just this. If you, if you had really the real numbers in front of you, and you truly understood the magnitude of where we've been. Let me just go back and talk just one second just about this. You know, in my state of the state, I said, you know, when I rolled in on day one, it's true. They handed me a set of books. I've, now I've seen some tough stuff, but I've never seen anything as tough 
is what we were facing at that time. You had the current year we were in, the current year when I got here, six months had already passed. We're supposed to have a balanced budget for that year. And we were going to come sliding across the finish line, $200 million upside down. Now that's what was going to happen. For good or for bad, that was what was going to happen. Where's the money going to come from? We can't take it out of rainy day because the rainy day fund is already drained to the point in time where we're getting our bonds degraded. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, absolutely, what are you going to do? The next year, right after that, you're going to have a $500 million <coughs> in the bucket and it's going to grow to $770 million as the projections work. <coughs> now, the only reason I say that is because we have had an honest to goodness, full blown miracle happen. Full blown, 18 karat miracle. Miracle that has happened. And now all of a sudden, all of us feel pretty good. Now, I would tell you, don't get lost in Groundhog Day. And by that I mean, where it just keeps happening, and happening, and happening. And you just happened in on one day, and the book said it's impossible, and you walked in on the next day, and it's all good. You know, so you say, it's good. You know, well, there's a lot more to it than that. A lot, lot, lot more to it than that. And one thing we don't want to do is be a bunch of rats scrambling for the cheese and everybody's thinking it's good and so everybody's scrambling all over the place and before you know it, we get in our own way and it comes all tumbling right back to where we've been over and over and over and over and that's dead last. 50th, 50th, and 50th. Now, I am telling you this, not necessarily as your governor, I am telling you this as your governor, but I am also telling you this as a guy that could be your ace business consultant. The guy that really knows. The guy that truly, really knows this stuff. Now, so the net of the whole thing is, what I'm telling you is be happy, but be horrendously cautious, because we could slide back. Now, I want to just tell you this as straight up as I can be about this. You know, we have some real interest, big time interest, big time interest in China. You know, that's a big thing. There's lots of things that are happening within West Virginia. Do I really believe that the Chinese are going to come in here and spend $83 billion? Do you know what $83 billion is, guys? I mean, really and truly, you could level every single city in West Virginia and build it back for $83 billion. You know, and I may be exaggerating a little bit, I don't know that I am, because I can't comprehend what $83 billion is, and I've done lots of big deals, lots and lots of them. Now, but I do believe there is real possibility for them to begin participation that will be significant. So we chase it, and we chase every single possibility, and we run everything we possibly can to ground. Now, one thing that's out there that absolutely we believe, I'm sure you believe to a degree, and it is the, and I'm going to mispronounce this, but it is the machinery and manufacturing and inventory tax that, that, that is laid on us that we have got a program now to where we can go through seven years and we can move on down the road. Now, we believe that that will significantly stimulate manufacturing business within our state. Significantly. But you are concerned about the dollars that flow to you. And rightfully so. And what we have got to do is protect those dollars no matter what we do. Now, you have my sole commitment that those dollars are going to be protected. And I want to read to you. I, I don't have many notes, but I want to read exactly how this is going to be done and how that, this, this will be said, is that, that, that those funded dollars are, well, let me read, I am very well aware 
The county budgets are currently funded by this and embedded in this constitutional amendment proposal is the provision that counties will be made whole in the state budget. So from what I understand, you are concerned about embedded in the constitutional amendments. It will be. So here's the bottom line. We got a real opportunity to say. And absolutely you have the ability to have control in your local areas. And I am all with you there. We have a phenomenal opportunity to grow. We have a president that is truly interested. I honestly don't know exactly why, but he is truly interested in West Virginia and he's a friend of mine. And I see Senator Manchin came in back here and Senator Manchin, you know, let's at least acknowledge and introduce Senator Manchin and y'all give him a big round of applause, please. <laughs> The President Trump, you know, probably dislikes Joe a little bit, but I know from time to time he significantly does like Joe. From the standpoint, you know, Joe has always been somebody that weighs in on both sides of the aisle. And Joe, you know, would tell you he is a very conservative Democrat, you know. Now, whether you love him or whether you don't like him, you know, that's up to you. Easy <laughs> now. But, but I, can, I can tell you that uh, Joe's been a friend of mine for a long, long time. You know, but let me go back to Don. Donald's a real friend, too. And I can't, I mean, I, if you'll forgive me for calling our great senator, you know, Joe, and Donald, Donald. You know, that's the way I would refer to him because he's been a friend a long time, his family as well. Can he really help West Virginia? Do you really think, do you really think that he needs West Virginia? I mean, he got 70% of the vote here. Our electoral votes, he's gonna get no matter what he does. But you know what? The one side about him you don't really know that I know is he cares, and he cares about everyone, but he really cares about us. He knows our strife, and he cares, and he's got a friend in me, and sometimes a joke, <laughs> but he's got a friend, a friend that truly, he doesn't want to let down. And so that gives us a big advantage. It really does. And absolutely, there will be things spawned from that that will be substantial for all of us. Now, I know what you want, and you've got to want jobs and opportunity for the people in your counties and the people in the state of West Virginia. That's what I want. I want to stop this terrible drug epidemic. I want to absolutely stop it. Now, can we eradicate it? No, but you can stop the terribleness of it to a gigantic degree. To do that, the very first thing you gotta have is one thing, and that's a job. You can say what you want, but you gotta have a job. Now, as we go forward, we want to continue to perpetuate things that will bring jobs and opportunity and that brings hope. And when you got hope, you're moving down the right road. You know, the first, I mean, just think, what does despair always bring? It always brings drugs. And so we just got to do something about it. We got to move ourselves forward. And absolutely, I believe with all in me, we're on a path that is, you know, I'm the one who brought the cow dude to the capital last year. <laughs> but, but right now, you know, a lot of people would say to me, you know, or say, well, Justice really just didn't understand the process. And he really just wasn't a politician. And I would say to you just this, and this is, this is tough, but it's just fact. 
For all those people that understood, for all the years that we understood, why did we continue to be 50? I don't want to understand that way. I mean, we knew how to run the play to be dead last. But I don't want to do that. So, if, you know, like me or not like me, somebody had to shake the cage just a little bit. And others shook my cage, and that's okay too. But at the end of the day, we're on the move. Are we there? No. Do we still have a lot of people that are out there hurting and a lot of projects we need to do? Absolutely. Do you not realize the magnitude of what we passed with the road bond referendum? Something that honestly, I mean, Tom Smith told me that this spring, this spring right now, there will be a billion dollars of road work going on this spring. Think about that. Think about what it will bring to our state. Think about the employment. You know, there's people that have been concerned about will the contractors pay their taxes? And I put a guy in charge of that to, like I said, nobody likes Bird White. So, <laughs> so really and truly, he'll make sure we get our taxes. Now, there's lots of things we can do. And I just came today to just tell you that uh, I really mean this when I say I appreciate you. I love you. And I want nothing but goodness for you in every county. And I appreciate all the great stuff that you do as commissioners all through every county. And absolutely, I want great stuff for our state. And I'm not going to quit as long as the good Lord gives me bread until we get there. And it's way, way down the trail. And the other thing that I want to tell you is just this. You know, the rumors going around every day, and I have so many rumors going around me, it's just unbelievable, but the last and greatest rumor was they walked into my office and said, you know, there's rumors going around everywhere you're dying. And I said, that doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> you know, and the other rumors going around everywhere is you're going to resign in three days. And I said, well, there's got to be somebody out there who really doesn't like me. I mean, you know, but uh, that's all hogwash. Absolute hogwash. You know, the good Lord has blessed me with one thing, and that is incredible stamina and incredible energy, and uh, that's what I run on. So, so uh, you know, I pray every day that, that I lose a little weight, and I pray every day that... Uh, that I lose more than a little weight, you know, but uh, I also pray every day for good health for myself and my family and all y'all, and, and, uh, and we'll just keep fighting through this. But nevertheless, I won't hold you up anymore. I need everybody just telling you that I love you, and I really appreciate what you do every day, and I will tell you with all my soul, we're on our way. We're on our way. We're getting ready to knock it out of the park, back double, triple. And all we got to do is don't screw it up. We got to not screw it up. And believe me, you may think, well, that's impossible. But I'm telling you, I've seen businesses. Because believe me, I got lots of experience and lots of stuff, and I've seen so many mistakes made by me and others, and I've learned from them. But I've seen businesses with the greatest opportunity in the world and the greatest potential under the blue and sun screw it up. And you know what? You can't sell potential and you can't sell opportunity. My dad would have said all the time, son, don't confuse effort with accomplishment. Think about it. Don't confuse effort with accomplishment. I don't really care how hard you try. I want you to achieve. And that's exactly, exactly what I think you live on every day. So, unless you're, I mean, not very often does your senior U.S. Senator walk in the room. Maybe he'd like to say something to you. I can't do it. You know what he did? No wonder y'all are tired. <laughs> God bless.